In video number 300, I postulated that each classroom should have a CO2 sensor against sleepiness. For a few days, we have a second reason that probably created a better business case for your project. The fear of a next lockdown might convince the shul managers more because CO2 measurements in rooms can also reduce aerosols in the air. As usual, we want more. We want the kids to be involved in the build of the sensors. And we will also learn how the different CO2 and eCO2 sensors behaved during the last six months. Besides that, I will show you an innovative new CO2 sensor. Grazie YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. With a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. One typical way of transmitting COVID-19 is via the air. This time, not over the air updates, but OTA infections. Last week, here in Switzerland, we had a super spreading event that made it into the New York Times. The infection was transported because the air was not correctly exchanged. Maybe our innovative sensor could have helped? Latest since video number 300, we know how to detect used air by measuring its CO2 content. But as said before, we want more. The sensor should be visible, but not disturbing during class. It has to be fancy enough to be accepted by the kids. Preferably, it should be possible to build one by the students. Like that, they can learn something about sensors and microcontrollers. Or woodwork, if they are interested. It has to measure CO2, not eCO2. I will show you the difference and the reason. It should be extendable and adaptable. There are other proposals for such sensors. For example, this German project. As its name says, it shows the result optically. I wanted to go another way because moving numbers can distract the students. And here is my proposal. A cuckoo clock which does not announce the hour, but the time to open the window or otherwise exchange the air. This clock is a complete fake. First, cuckoo clocks are no Swiss thing. They are German. Second, this bird is for sure no cuckoo. And third, Arnold Schwarzenegger does not live in this small house. In addition, he is not Swiss nor German. Even if he speaks like me, he is Austrian. The only non-fakes are the CO2 values. Anyway, you can comment if you have a better idea for visualizing the need for air cleaning. Let's start with a build. We need five things. A bird's house. Disabled people made this one and I think they did a great job. A CO2 sensor and a microcontroller. I will use a professional sensor from Sensirion and an ESP32, mainly because it runs on 3.3 volts. It is also extendable if you want to create a dashboard for your shul, for example. A 3D printed bird, including a linear servo to move it. A voice generation module, including amplifier and loudspeaker. And the voices of a cuckoo and the terminator. My bird's house can be accessed from the top. It is not made for breeding, it is made for feeding the birds in winter. Building a similar house should be within reach of most woodworking classes. So we can continue with the sensor and the microcontroller. I choose one of those ESP32 mini boards because it is small and all peripheral components run on 3.3 volts. I also need two serial connections. A 3.3 volt Arduino mini with software serial would do it too but its programming with an FTDI board is a little more complicated. And you would lose the possibility to connect it to the internet if you want. Now to the sensors selection. If you are not interested in CO2 sensors, you can skip this part and go to the next chapter. This is a new YouTube feature. In video number 300, we saw that we could buy real CO2 sensors and so-called eCO2 sensors. 
What is the difference? The first is the price. Real CO2 sensors are much more expensive than eCO2 sensors. eCO2 sensors measure different gases emitted by humans. And the theory goes that they can be used instead of the more expensive CO2 sensors. So, should we use eCO2 sensors for our meter? Here is an example of measurements of a few days. While the real CO2 sensors show little differences in their reading, they move very parallel. The eCO2 values sometimes follow the CO2 values and sometimes not. So, they are not very dependable. I strongly suggest using real CO2 sensors for your project. Sensors like the SGP30, the CC811 and the BME680 therefore are out for this purpose. Let's now focus on the CO2 sensors. I have the following selection. The cheapest is the Chinese MHC19. It has a serial connection and about the same size as the Sunrise sensor from Sensair. The next is the SCD30 from Sensirion. The latter two have I2C connectors. All three sensors use the same principle, non-dispersive infrared or NDIR. They use the fact that CO2 blocks light with a wavelength of around 4.26 micrometer. A diode emits infrared light which travels through the air towards a detector, usually with a filter for those 4.26 micrometers in front of it. That's all. The more CO2 in the air, the lower the light level for the sensor. But because the light changes are minimal, these parts must be produced with high precision. In spring, I got an innovative new sensor, a SCD40 also from Sensirian. It uses an entirely different principle, the photoacoustic effect. As in the NDIR sensors, an IR emitter emits light at the wavelength absorbed by the CO2 molecules. When molecules absorb energy, they increase their movement and therefore increase the pressure inside the sensor's nearly closed room. This principle was known for many years but the devices were quite big and expensive. Sensirian was able to miniaturize the principle to this small size. You can imagine that the pressure increase is not high and hard to detect. This is why they use a trick. The IR light is modulated. Now the pressure increases and reduces with the frequency of the modulation. A microphone can measure this sound and determine the amount of CO2 molecules in this small room. Cool! Because this effect also depends on humidity and temperature, they included a sensor for those values too. These sensors are not yet sold. I got an early version for my tests directly from Sensirion. The next question, which accuracy do we need for our purpose? One thing is essential. The outside CO2 concentration is around 410 ppm at sea level. It is reduced by 3% for every 300 meters altitude. So it's easy to calibrate the sensor. For long-term stability, it has to be calibrated from time to time. The Sensirion and the Sunrise sensors have an automatic adjustment. For the MHC19, I'm not sure. Anyway, it should be possible for most rooms to determine the minimum value, for example during the night, and set it to 410 ppm. The next question is, what CO2 concentration is dangerous? Here we can have a look at two extreme situations, submarines and the space station. Both have to save on air and cannot exchange it often. NASA has set the maximum allowable 24-hour average CO2 on board of the ISS at 5,250 ppm. Data collected on nuclear-powered submarines indicate an average CO2 concentration of 3,500 to 4,100 ppm, with maximum values of 11,300 ppm. We see the accuracy needed is not too important. But we have to be sure that we measure CO2. 
I suggest putting the limit at around 1000 to 1500 ppm. And above that value, the cuckoo should remind us to open the windows for a short time. By the way, just opening a window or two is not good. Much better is to open the windows and the door. Like that, the chance the air is wholly exchanged is much higher. Now we should be able to select our sensor. After 9 months of usage, all four sensors still work and deliver values. With compensation, all sensors were accurate enough for our purpose. I choose the SCD30 because it uses I2C and is small. I2C was important because I needed the second serial connection for the sound system of my clock. I mounted the sensor below the house because CO2 is heavier than air. The next component of our CO2 cuckoo clock is the moving bird, of course. I printed a linear servo which translates this servo rotation into a linear movement of about 4 cm. Enough for our purpose. And the mini servo is strong enough. I found a more professional looking linear servo, but its tolerances are quite tight and I had to help it with a little silicon lubricant. Both Thingiverse links are in the description. The bird also comes from Thingiverse. I just had to reduce its size with Simplify 3D. Prusa Slicer has the same feature and I think other slicers have it too. Now I mounted the bird on the rail using superglue. And the moving bird is ready. Add the servo library and adjust the servo as well as the linear actuator. The servo moves 180 degrees. The last part is the sound. As said before, I choose an acoustic alarm because the alarm system of humans is acoustic. With this concept, nothing interesting happens as long as the air does not need to be exchanged and the students can study. Only if the air is used too much, the bird becomes visible and announces the event. I'll be back. As announced, it comes back every 30 seconds until the CO2 value is lowered. Of course, you could add a second announcement if the value is below 500, for example, to close the windows. The sound is produced by this small MP3 player, an amplifier and a loudspeaker. You can also use the player used in video number 259. I searched for WAV files with cuckoo clock sounds and stored it on the SD card. The naming is not essential. The sequence is solely defined by in which sequence the files are copied to the SD card. Not a very good idea, but ok if you know it. And I added the Terminator as a surprise for kids. I'll be back. But of course, here your and the kids imagination is the limit. Now I put everything together. For that I need this small 3D printed mount for the mechanics. I suggest to power the clock with a USB power brick because it consumes too much energy for a battery. Now I can place it here in my lab to protect me from sleeping too much. Before you start with your build, I summarize. We finished a unique cuckoo clock which announces too high CO2 values in a room. It uses a real CO2 sensor because the eCO2 sensors are not reliable in detecting exhaled air. I compared three conventional and one new eCO2 sensors and saw that they were all ok for our purpose. Outside CO2 values are very stable at around 410 ppm at sea level. They can be used to calibrate our sensors from time to time. Fixing a maximum allowed CO2 level is no science. Knowing that the guys in the space station have a maximum of 5000 ppm, I suggest going for a limit of 1000 to 1500 ppm. Also because of the current corona discussions. The alarm is done with a moving cuckoo and its typical sound. Such a clock can be built with kits if you are a teacher or father watching this channel. If you want to get a kit, I suggest looking at Guido Burger's project called CO2 Traffic Light. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. 
I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.